Sean's story begins in Oceanside, California. This is where the two best friends would meet and embark on a guitar journey that would inspire millions of music fans across the world. Oceanside is a suburb based in San Diego and would be ground zero for the best friends' complimentary feel-good sound, whimsical vibe, and finger-frenzied riffs. Besides being where the story begins, San Diego is known for its beautiful beach community, pier, and music scene. For reference, many well-known acts have come out of San Diego. Blink-182, Pierce the Veil, As I Lay Dying, and Stone Temple Pilots, to name a few. So it's not totally surprising that two kids with big dreams would get their musical start here. The best friends in question are Mario Camarina and Eric Hansel. Mario was born on August 15, 1992, and spent his entire upbringing in San Diego. His cultural heritage is Mexican, and his father used to play in a mariachi band, giving him early exposure to music. Eric was born on June 6, 1990, and spent his younger years never settling into one place because of his father's military background. Almost as if by fate, this duo would end up living in the same city and get gifted guitars at the same time before meeting each other a year into playing. Mario would receive a Fender Mini Squire as a Christmas gift, and Eric would get some cheap Fender guitar and amp combo. Before crossing paths, the duo would receive a year's worth of guitar lessons from notable Oceanside guitar teacher Seth Hollander, who would imbue both Mario and Eric with the fundamentals of playing guitar. After that year, they would go off on their own but maintain a friendship with Seth who would act as a mentor. At 13 or 14 years old, Mario had a band he would play in for fun. A bandmate and close friend of Mario's at the time would tell him about Eric during their jam sessions together and would strongly encourage that they meet each other as he began to see the musical gifts the two possessed. This friend thought that they would be able to make incredible music together if they joined forces, so eventually the two would be connected. Eric would visit the Camarina family home for an audition and instantly hit it off with Mario. Mario and Eric both had the same interests around video games, skating, playing the guitar, and they even bonded over fast food. Later into their careers, with an interview conducted at Fuji Rock Festival, Mario would state that a major bonding moment for him and Eric was that he was the only person he had met at the time who knew the same skate tricks as him. Right. Well, your band consists of three brothers and one old friend, right? Yep, he's and pretty much a brother. You've been together since you were like 13, 14, playing the guitar, yeah. learning the guitar together, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried out for a band that... Yeah, my I I was in a band and we needed a guitar player. So a friend of mine was like, "Hey, you need to meet my friend Eric. Like, he's crazy at guitar. Like, you would make cool music together." So he introduced us. The chemistry between the two was so great that the same day they met, Eric spent the night at the Camarina family home, and the two would begin writing music and practicing together for over a decade. The pair would form an unofficial band and teach Mario's younger brother Nathan how to play drums at a very young age after a mutual friend of theirs named Brian Evans would be banned from the Camarina house after an incident that Mario's father disapproved of. In spite of this, Brian would remain an honorary member of Chan and drum teacher to Nathan while also being a contributing writing member of the band up until the release of their 2019 self-titled album. Additionally, a third Camarina brother by the name of Esai would join the group as a bass guitarist. This unofficial group was the foundation that would become Chan, but with the members being in their early teen years, there would be little momentum outside of writing, practicing, and jamming with each other for fun. Like the bands who came before them, San Diego was ready to give the world another taste of the sound this sunny city had to offer, but our budding musicians needed time to grow. Just three years after banding together, the four members of this yet-to-be-named band would have their first show lined up. Mario and Eric, who were the main songwriters in this group, would finally be ready to unveil the music they've been working on ever since they joined forces. Even though they had songs ready and a show lined up, they had yet to name the band. 
They were told by the owners of the venue location that they'd need a name so that they could be put on flyers. Soon after, while practicing guitar together, they would hear Chan being set on the background on the Science Channel. Chan is an acronym for carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, the most common elements that make up life. The teenagers thought the word was funny and decided to officially name their band after it. In 2008, Chan would play their first few shows, release their first few demos, and start promoting themselves online. With Mario being 15, Eric being 18, Isai being 14, and Nathan being 11, it didn't take long for people to start taking notice of the extreme talent and musicianship put on display. Mario would personally spend up to 12 hours a day studying music theory and working on his technique. He and Eric were so good at the guitar that they would learn to play necrophagia songs together, something that is not possible for many adult guitarists, and they were essentially doing this as teenagers. Eventually, the group would play local shows for a brief period of time, but found it difficult to bring in crowds early on. To make up for this, they'd begin releasing their early demos online, and people really resonated with what they were doing. Although the online reception was good, this would be slow progress with the bandmates being teenagers that needed to focus on their education. Regardless, what they were able to do with their early demos must have acted as positive reinforcement for what could be possible for them if they kept at it. Mario and Eric had dreams to become professional guitar players after seeing a live video of Jimmy Page when they were younger, and envisioned a life on the road, getting on stage every night doing what they loved. Around the time I started playing guitar, and we both like grew up learning guitar together and we all we've always wanted to play in a band and tour and play guitar professionally like ever since we started playing together as high school came to an end and seeing that there was some people out there that was interested in what chan had to offer the best friend tag team would make the decision to pursue music professionally it would be around this time that seth hollander who had been playing the role of guitar teacher and mentor to mario would give him a call and ask him to meet up. Seth would drive to the Camarina family home and give Mario a custom-designed Ibanez adorned with purple flower patterns, an homage to Mario's love of Hawaiian shirts at the time. It can be speculated that Seth offered this guitar to Mario as a token to show his belief in Mario's ability to make it into the big leagues as a musician. With early adulthood in front of them, Chan would soon prepare to get their first EP together but not before taking a leap of faith into San Diego's underground metal scene. During Chan's early days, San Diego had a thriving metalcore scene, and Mario would find himself playing in some of the local bands while writing Chan material alongside Eric. A notable project that Mario contributed to was the band To Each His Own, that appeared to be gaining some momentum around the time Mario joined. Their music video for My Final Despair would feature Mario and his new bandmates playing in a party setting. A familiar face would be seen in the appearance of Drew Pelisek, a longtime friend of Chan who would sing and play bass for To Each His Own before being replaced by vocalist Richie King of Oceans. It is likely at the time Mario had to begin thinking seriously about what project he wanted to focus on. To Each His Own was new and when looking at what was popular at the time, had a bigger shot at being able to get somewhere in the music industry. Chan was a passion project made up of best friends and brothers with a unique sound that wasn't by any logical means going to be what had any shot at commercial success. 
Mario would decide that he would rather work on Chan and leave to each his own so that he and Eric could wrap up their first EP and start realizing their childhood dreams together. Isai Camarina would step away from Chan, and Drew would join Eric, Mario, and Nathan as a bass player for the band. After Mario's departure, To Each His Own would launch a failed Indiegogo campaign and disband. Mirroring To Each His Own, Drew, Eric, and the Camarina brothers would attempt to launch a funding project of their own. On January 30th, 2012, Chan announced the Kickstarter campaign to help get some funding for their new EP. What's up guys, I'm Drew from the band Chan. And we've been writing a bunch of music lately, as you can see we're in pre-production right now. And we want to release a full length for you guys, but we don't have enough money. So, we've started a Kickstarter fund. Thanks so much for always reposting our songs and videos, so be sure to share this video so everyone knows that we need to make money to release this album. Later, Hemis. At the end of the campaign, Chan would have come up with $2,395 from the support of 71 backers. The band had set a goal of $5,000 to get some studio equipment, but would unfortunately fall short of their goal. Although To Each His Own would fade away after a similar moment to failure, Chan would see the new project through to the end by working and saving whatever they could to get their new EP out. On May 22nd, 2013, Chan would announce on Facebook that they would be releasing a project titled Newborn Son on June 11th of the same year. Before this announcement, dating as far back as 2009, Chan would play a song titled Newborn Son during their live shows, giving their fans something to look forward to and a pleasant surprise. This new record would be their first major project since the release of their early demos they had put out as teenagers. The release of Newborn Son would be a maturing moment for the band, as they would begin to incorporate e-commerce into their bag of tricks. The Chan machine would be entering its next stage of development. Like with their previous projects, Chan would aggressively release guitar playthrough videos of their music on YouTube to gain exposure. It wouldn't even be for a few more years that the band would release their first ever music video. In the early days, most of their promotion came from word of mouth, guitar playthroughs, and live shows. Mario and Eric knew that once they put this project out, they wanted to take things with Chan full throttle and actualize their childhood dream of traveling the world and playing guitar together professionally. Later that year, they would hit the road alongside Last Chance to Reason and bass prodigy Evan Brewer. The band would spend a few weeks in the summer of 2013 on their first tour traveling in an SUV equipped with a U-Haul, building key industry relationships, all while entrancing unsuspecting concert goers into their world of bouncy, feel-good, jazz fusion-inspired noodling. The shredding best friend duo were Tunnel Vision, and would soon begin to reap the benefits of all the seeds they had planted since childhood. Animals as leaders, who were preparing to launch their promotional run for their soon-to-be-released record, The Joy of Motion, would announce an album release tour on December 20, 2013. Among the list of bands that would be on the road with them were acts like After the Burial, Naveen K, and, of course, Chan. This would be a huge moment for the Oceanside Quartet, and get them playing in front of the right crowds and the right people to get their childhood project off the ground. The timing couldn't have been any better, since the band had announced their follow-up project to Newborn Son titled Woo Hoo. In the previous year, the band would start getting momentum on their open board forum, which was beginning to accrue a pretty big following and dedicated user base. On the forum, fans would rave about the band's progress, and Mario, who would occasionally chat with the fans, would update their growing audience on things to come. The dream was beginning to grow wings. And although progress was slow, the band was successfully selling merchandise and records online, having Newborn Son and WooHoo be top sellers on platforms like Bandcamp. While touring with Animals as leaders, Mario would do an interview with Sputnik Music where he was asked about the band's fusion influences. Mario had this to say. 
Yeah, we've been wanting to go less metal, basically because people associate us with, I mean, look at the kind of shows we're playing. A lot of people throw the metal tag on our older stuff, but we've just been wanting to transition away from that label of being a metal band, but everything's still been made the same way. It's just a transition, because that music's like six years old. We were like 15 at the time. Mario's statements implied that the band was looking to explore new sounds through Chan with the new release. The band was ready to show the world what they were made of after wrapping up their tour with Animals as Leaders. In March of the same year, Chan would secure a spot touring with the band Circus Survive, and while on tour, their third project titled Woohoo would finally be released and get the band major attention from both concert goers and a booming online audience. The EP featured more jazz fusion-inspired sounds, with the heavy use of hybrid picking, a technique that was uncommon at the time which helped them stand out even amongst the now-growing group of rising guitar stars on social media. In just a few short months, Sean would get back on tour with Animals as Leaders again and Conquering Dystopia to finish up the summer season strong. Wrapping up the year, Chan would partner up with a small but rising instrumental act from Texas named Polyphia and collaborate on their first studio album titled Muse, helping give this new band a bigger push and beginning a relationship that would create more opportunities in the future. At the year's end, Chan would announce that they had signed with Sumerian Records and that they would be working on their first ever studio album six whole years after putting their first demos out together. Things were really looking good for Eric, Drew, Mario, and Nathan, but nothing would be able to prepare them for the popularity and recognition they would soon see now that they had the support of a major label backing them. On February 5th of 2015, Chan and crew would finally make a statement regarding their first ever full-length album. They let the fans know that the project would be titled Grow, and that it would be released on March 24th of the same year. Just as planned, Mario and Eric wanted to take things as far as they could with Sean and refused to take their feet off the gas, and seized major opportunities while working extremely hard on the road with some of the tour dates taking them international for the first time in their careers. They secured placements on stages with acts like Circus Survive, Balance and Composure, The Contortionist, The Fall of Troy, Rolo Tomasi, The Deer Hunter, and many more. During these shows, using their newfound connections at Sumerian Records, Chan would release their first single from Grow titled Can't Wait through Red Bull's media distribution network, putting the band and its sound in front of significantly more people. Grow would be released and receive positive reviews overall and land them in their first Billboard 200 placement, with the record peaking at 166 on the charts. All the success would not be met without some challenges, though. On November 8th, Chan would let fans know through Twitter that they would be separating with longtime friend and bass player Drew Pelisek over creative differences. Drew would have to say this regarding his departure from the band. Hey guys, I am no longer a member of Chan. Thank you so much to everyone who came to a show or bought an album or listened to a song over the last couple years. I've learned a tremendous amount playing and touring with these guys, and I hope you will continue to follow everything they do. And a huge thanks to the three of them for the opportunity to play in this band. Much love always. Have a great weekend, everybody. And once again, thank you. It's been real fun. Although this was an unfortunate setback, Mario, Eric, and Nathan couldn't let it stop them from pressing forward with their goals, and the third Camarina brother Esai would rejoin the band for the remainder of their journey together. Now it would be time to reach back into their old contacts and make a significant play. 
On December 16th, through Sumerian Records, Chan announced their first ever headlining tour with Polyphia and Strawberry Girls, which was now set to begin early March of 2016. Every single show on the Super Chan Bros tour would be sold out, with the band also playing 92 shows in the previous years leading up to this moment. Mario and Eric would make their childhood dream of becoming a professional guitar player reality, but little would prepare them for just how much farther they could go. Eric and the Camarinas would continue their aggressive touring efforts throughout much of 2016 with bigger and bigger acts. Chan would then release their sophomore album titled Homie on June 16th, 2017. Okay, I kinda like this tone for the next part. Homey would see major collaborative efforts from artists like Giraffridge, Lofile, Anthony Crawford, and more to help solidify Chan's place in the music industry. Homey would peak at number 66 on the Billboard charts, an absolutely staggering number for a jazz fusion-inspired instrumental band. On March 7, 2018, Chan would rejoin a bigger-than-ever Polyphia for a second Super Chan Bros tour alongside TTNG and Tricot. In these years, the band would really start to see the fruits of their labors manifest into their childhood ideal. Chan knew who they were, they knew what they were doing, and they knew how to do it. Going into the year 2019, Chan would continue to make strides and outdo themselves. It was beginning to become clear who Chan was and what they stood for as musicians. In a 2019 interview with Unclear Mag, Eric was asked how he hoped people would take their live performances, and his answer was simple but encapsulated something that Sean gave life to and focus to since its inception. Eric said, Hopefully that instrumental music could have a place in some people's lives. Even with all their previous accomplishments, 2019 would be a defining year for the band and truly showcase the level of success they'd achieved. They would announce and embark on their first ever world tour and hit countries like China, Japan, Singapore, the United Kingdom, and Germany to name a few. Did I forget to mention that they were able to use tour buses by now? This is an experience few artists ever get to have, so for a quirky instrumental project from San Diego to get to this point is really something incredible. On the online front, Chan would break over 100 million streams on Spotify, get millions of views for their music videos, and were able to successfully sell out their merchandise. The same year would also have Mario and Eric get signature Ibanez guitar models. Now we have some signature Ibanezes, which is pretty much a dream come true. I went with this like transparent green. It really showcases the the wood grain really cool. It's like a burst from black. I actually have a different fretboard than the one that's on yours. This is the... It was like, it was really the first time I, I started recording with single coil guitars. I kind of just fell in love with that sound for cleans and stuff. So I took basically the same specs, like same wood, same pickups and everything, and added 24 frets to it. Through Chan, they would release their self-titled album on June 7th, 2019, which would be their third ever project to make it to the Billboard Top 200 charts. Everything was on the up and up and it looked like Chan was becoming a bastion of hope for many young musicians who just wanted to create what they enjoyed and be able to find success. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And with the global crisis set to put the world of touring and music in a standstill, Chan would be caught in a private crossroad regarding the future of the band that wouldn't be apparent for fans of their music for four more years. After the worst parts of the pandemic were over and life began to return to normal, 
fans would question the whereabouts of Chan. Just a few short years prior, they were at the top of the world, but now there was no activity on their social media accounts. Mario, who would begin live streaming and interacting with fans more thoroughly on social media during the early parts of the pandemic, would have almost completely vanished online. It wouldn't take long for rumors to begin circulating, and fans would suspect that as a project, Chan would be coming to an end. Fans would still be in the dark about what was going on until honorary Chan member Brian Evans would be featured on a podcast where he described label troubles for the band that essentially ruined their careers. As a response, Mario and Eric would publicly deny the statements made by Brian Evans via Discord and leave these messages after speculation and rumors began to spread like wildfire. Yeah, there's been no official talk of ending the band. I've been feeling like a hiatus has been a much needed thing for me and the band for a while now. I wouldn't want to release stuff I wasn't all in for anyways. When we made the demo in 2008, we knew the shit was crazy, but we didn't know it would get the amount of support that it does. So thanks for the love, and I hope you guys understand. Just to make it clear, we haven't had a conversation about officially ending Chan for good, but right now, I guess you can call it a hiatus. I've been doing Chan for just about half my life at this point, and I personally wanted to not think about Chan or anything to do with it for a while. I've been needing that for the good of my mental and physical well-being. Ultimately, none of this would end up mattering in the end, because on February 5th, 2024, fans would finally get the news they were afraid of the most. On Instagram, when asked by a fan about the future state of the band, Eric would say the following. We took a break in 2020 because of the pandemic, and then we didn't want to continue. I know as a fan you might not want to hear that, but it was the best decision for us. Chan was officially done. Mario and Eric had realized their childhood dreams and were ready to move on to the next stage of their lives. Under the moniker Sleepy Ghost, Relaxo, D-Mart, and Liminal Kid, the former Chan members released a lo-fi hip-hop album through Rise Records titled Lazy Autumn back in October 20th, 2023. Additionally, Eric has been teasing some new music through Instagram. Although Chan as a chapter seems to be over for now, the creative forces that got this extreme group of musicians together is still at work and it will be exciting to see what other incredible projects they release in the future. Mario Camarina and Eric Hansel's legacy and influence in the world of modern guitar cannot be understated. It is rare to see an act with such a genuine and authentic sound reach the position they did in the music industry, and their personal journey gives hope to many guitar players and artists that look up to them in terms of what is possible.